Radio 77 WABC. So Curtis Sliwa is your upcoming host on The Rip and Read. And Curtis, don't ever let it be said that I don't do my homework. Because I did get a response from All right, City Hall. Well, let's, let's uh, wheel it back. Also, you don't want to miss it. As I get into the rest of this hour, I had a premonition last night. After Aaron Judge hit that record home run about the Yankees this year. I'm going to share it this hour. You don't want to miss it. Okay. And you are you are a sports talker. People forget that. I mean, yeah, you, were, look, uh... you, you asked Ray Kelly, right? The father of Greg Kelly, when he was police commissioner, best we ever had. Bratton would have to get a shine box uh, to even uh, be comparable to Ray Kelly. He would always tell you, you heard him say it here, right, in the newsroom. Oh, the best sports talk program I ever listened to was the Curtis Lee was Super Sports Spectacular on ESPN. And then I got fired because I made fun of Bud Selig, the uh, baseball commissioner who I said had a bad rug and was wearing the polyester waffle weave flame retardant high waters because of all the floods that he had survived, the Mississippi River and the Missouri River. And the boys up in Bristol told Tim McCarthy, who was general manager, you like feeding your kids in Pearl River, the Irish Riviera, you don't believe in uh, condoms. He's got a lot of kids. So either get rid of Sliwa or you're fired. What do you think he did? Yeah, I believe that that was a pretty easy decision for him. Very easy, but probably pretty easy. I make your life full miserable because I'm always making demands. That's true, that's and true. I'm always bringing to our audience's attention uh, news stories that nobody else seems to be concerned with but me. It's like, for instance, yesterday, with all the migrant crime, we now have it. Shell has gone on record as saying the reason for the crime in Central Park, migrant crime, right? They're actually saying this now after two years, migrant crime, migrant crime. Yeah, H- half the people arrested for robbery in Southern Central Park over the last y- half a year are migrants. Yeah, and they're from the Watson Hotel. They just should keep everybody in the Watson Hotel. Don't let them go out and the crime will go down. But let's stay focused on this. So with all this migrant crime going on, what is Eric Adams doing yesterday at 430? He goes down where else? To Whitehall Street to raise the Pakistani flag of Pakistan. Pakistan. Just blocks from the World Trade Center. Remember, Osama bin Laden was being given protection in Pakistan until our naval SEAL team went in and took him out. Also, the most recent Pakistani to come to our attention was arrested July 12th because he was putting together a hit team to finish the job of killing President Donald Trump. Pakistani. Never mind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, mastermind of 9-11, and his uh, degenerate uh, uh, cousin, Ramzi Youssef, a mastermind of the first attack. All Pakistanis. What the hell is he raising that flag for? What, 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 what is he going to waste the white flag next? We surrender to the terrorists that, that have come over to our country to destroy us. What's been the answer from City Hall? Who were you, re, re, you were reaching out to the head propaganda minister there, right? Right. So I asked if City Hall had a comment. I said I saw that Mayor Adams will be raising that Pakistani flag at Bowling Green. But I can't help but think about the fact that Pakistan harbored Osama bin Laden after the 9-11 attacks, forcing the U.S. military to eventually conduct an operation, good. bring him to justice. Good, so of good. course, Bowling Green is just steps away from Ground Zero, where yep. in less than a month we'll hold that annual commemoration event. Does Mayor Adams think it's fair for someone to consider it inappropriate oh, for him to you, participate you know, it, in a Pakistani flag-raising ceremony that, as a result? That led it to the propaganda minister. What's his name again? That's Fabian Levy. Yeah, yeah, boy, that's... That's uh, not the title that he uses, by the way. That's better than sex, I'm telling you. You left one thing out. How many Pakistani rupees did Eric Adams and his cronies get for raising that flag? You you left that out. Yeah, I didn't ask that. Okay, all right. So what was the response? So the response came in that from a City Hall spokesperson, from day one, Mayor Adams has been clear that celebrations in our city should be welcoming and inclusive. Community events like parades and flag raisings allow New Yorkers to honor their roots and diverse cultural backgrounds. They are not in support of nations, but are put on in an effort to continue to come together to support local diasporas who made New York City their home and contribute significantly to the five boroughs. Okay, all right, enough of that crap. Uh, I noticed there's three uh, flags he has not raised, although he's accepting money from some of them. 
Uh, we know the red Chinese flag, right? Uh, there are some Chinese here who openly support him, like his Asian aide, Winnie Greco, who got raided by the FBI. She was an agent for the red Chinese. No qualms about that. Has he raised the red Chinese flag in honor of so many uh, Chinese who are still loyal to the uh, mainland? I, I don't believe so, no. What about the Russian flag? A lot of Russians, not all of them hate Putin. You know, a lot of them, they, they like Putin. Uh, has he raised the Russian flag, the Russian federational flag? I don't think so. He also said he would think he would consider raising the uh, flag of the Palestinians, the Palestinian flags. Has he raised that flag yet? Not that I'm aware of. So, according to Fabian uh, Levy, his propaganda minister, I guess those uh, three locations he can't find on the map. I mean, I can understand the Palestinian. There's no place of it, you know, uh, no place that's designated as such. But how do you miss Russia and Red China on the map, right? I mean, in geography, we saw, oh, that's right, Russia, biggest country in the world, Canada, second biggest Third biggest tied with Red China in terms of land mass, right? How do you miss those? How do you miss those? You get back and you touch want me to them. follow up with that yeah, and ask, ask about him, uh, if he has Russia when when he's going to be doing, raising those flags. Russia, he, he doesn't want to offend anybody, right? He doesn't, okay, flag. he doesn't want to offend anybody. Now you know what he's doing today again with all the migrant crime in the city that he is responsible for because he welcomed them in and gave them the best com- uh, accommodations, and they, they flood here. You know what he's doing at 430? He's uh, accepting more rupees, but this time the Indian rupee, which is different than the Pakistani rupee, he's raising the Indian flag. Oh, okay. Now... Those are two countries that are even more ominous than the pending attack that we think Iran is going to do against Israel. Oh, yeah. Because they both have nuclear weapons aimed at one another. Right. A trigger hair separates them from annihilating one another. Very true. So he's raising the flag there, getting the Indian rupees. And there's a huge controversy. Now, most of our audience is oblivious to it. But if you're out there in the ethnic communities as I am, you'll know this constant tension between in India... Hindus and Muslims. The Hindus are the majority. Muslims are the minority. In fact, if you've been to India, as I have, to Pancheri, Bombay, Madras, if you catch a cab, they're all black cabs. They're all driven by Muslims. They seem to have a lock on that. They eat meat halal. Hindus don't. But the Hindus are the majority. And they have their big parade this Saturday on Fifth Avenue. And now I see there's a huge controversy involving that parade. Uh, Can you update us, Mr. Wasp from Bloomfield? The only curry you would be aware of is if you were driving down the New Jersey Turnpike and you were ready to go to Island or to Edison, Edison. New Jersey, which is basically Little Bombay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so basically the controversy involves an incident. In India, that dates back to the early 90s, I believe. I think it was 1992 okay. when there was a Muslim, I guess, shrine or uh, uh, mosque. Mo- okay, so a mosque. It was actually a, a, a place of worship. Yeah. And it was destroyed. It was destroyed by, in essence, a, a marauding mob, uh, a riot of Hindus. Right. And since then, there's been increasing tension regarding that uh, by the way it turned deadly the kind of you know no, no, riots sure. and you know all the Understood. stuff that turned out Understood. after so since then there's been a number of different controversies surrounding that incident one was actually in new jersey where there was uh going to be a similar event a similar type parade and they brought out a bulldozer right in where edison in Islam. exactly right? okay. and that was supposed to symbolize that use of a bulldozer to take out that mosque now in this instance with the fact that they're having a parade here coming up on Saturday, there is a float that is sort of commemorating that whole event, that whole 1992 destruction of this, of this Quran. So what happened was mayor Adams says in respect of our Muslim population here in the city, you got to get rid of that float. You have to get rid of that float. It's antagonistic. It's anti-Muslim. It's very painful for those members of the community. You can have your parade, obviously, celebrating India, but you got to get rid of that flow. All right. I understand that. What does his girlfriend, though, say? You know, the lady in red that's always with him 
You know, I call her. You're talking about Jennifer Raj, Raj Kumar? Yeah, but she's Indian. You know, she yeah, there's I mean, no mix. She's and straight pra- Indian. Practicing Hindu. Right. So she's like Carmen Sandiego. You know, Carmen Sandiego. Uh, what is that game, that it TV a, show? Yeah, it was a video game and TV show. Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? Right. And that spy dressed in red that is chased across the world. Right. right? She did actually wear yeah, See, red. I'm pretty good with that. I'm surprised that you made that reference. No, I, my sons watch that. Okay. You know, so, <laughs> it's how I bet. But I made the connection. It's just like her what's her opinion on all this i mean this affects the indian parade on fifth avenue well i haven't reached out personally to her office but there was an article uh that you actually pointed out to me talking about all this in the gothamist i think it was Yeah, yeah and basically they said they reached out to her office and didn't get a response wow this could cause a chasm between her and her boyfriend eric adams because wherever eric is she is I noticed yesterday when they had the conference, uh, press conference about taking down all the scaffolds. Because, you know, we're just, uh, 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 we, the city is just filled with scaffolding. And, it, oh, we're going to take it down. He did this up in Harlem. You know, he, he recycles these events and he thinks we're stupid. But I noticed, look, she wasn't there. First time she's not there. She's like an appendage to him. Wherever Eric Adams is, the lady in red is. Well, what is her name again? Jennifer Raj Kumar. Oh, I think of her as I think of the uh, movie The Devil Wears Prada. Because remember, the theme of that was the uh, you saw the picture of the red six inch stacked heels. Right. There, right. right. Uh, and, you know. Uh, Sid loves that movie. He looks like Stan Tucci, and she's a bit of like a Meryl Streep in that movie, a real diva. So she hasn't weighed in on this, and she hasn't been seen with the mayor. No, but I mean, I will say that she, I think, just announced her run for controller. controller. Yes. Yeah, so maybe that's what was had her busy yesterday. No, come on. She's always at the mayor's side. I mean, she, she shadows the mayors. Okay, so there's problems uh, with Team Adams there with, what's her name again? The uh, lady in red. Raj Kumar. Right. Total- she, just, she just sent out a Twitter message a couple hours ago, by yes. the way. Happy 78th Ind- Indian Independence Day. Okay, well, that's the big parade on Saturday, and Eric Adams says he's never been invited to that parade. Whoa. I mean, he's in every parade. He's raising the flag today at 4.30. He's going to get the Indian rupees in the envelope. Maybe, maybe I, I he'll get an invite are. then. Yeah, but what is he going to say about this? Because what happens if the organizers of this parade refuse to take that float out? Well, that's a good can question. Can he ban I them? I don't think he can. Will that bring out Muslim protesters? So instead of attacking uh, Jews, you know, from the river to the sea, they'll have something else to, to focus on. Or well, could I could I make a suggestion? That, what's the name of his propaganda minister, who's now a deputy mayor and gets paid a lot of like over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do nothing? Could you ask him this? Because the mayor, when he went to the Indian parade up on Hillside Avenue, you know they have a big ashram there and they have their parade up there. Uh, the mayor had this to say about he wants to be just like Gandhi. So I'm Gandhi-like. I think like Gandhi. I act like Gandhi. I want to be like Gandhi. Can I hear that one more time, please, Lou? So I'm Gandhi-like. I think like Gandhi. I act like Gandhi. I want to be like Gandhi. Well, first off, Gandhi wasn't wearing $5,000 customized suits. That is true. He was wearing a diaper. Yes, he was. All right. I don't, the mayor's not... Very bright in some ways. Other ways, you know, surviving, getting wine, dine, and parking lines, saying what the audience wa- wants to hear, he's great. Does he not realize that Gandhi opposed the state of Israel, said it was wrong and inhumane, when Ben Gurion announced that it was a nation state supported by our president, Harry Truman? He, does he not realize that Gandhi? was opposed to the state of Israel. And by the way, if he were alive today, whose side do you think he would be on when you have the... Do you think he'd be at the DNC with the 100,000 singing from the river to the sea, you think? Yeah, yeah. Man, you got to let Fabian leave you know he's... He's dealing in geopolitical waters, and he just goes wherever they give him money. City for sale. Eric Adams for sale. So... 
you, you got detailed homework here. You think you can handle this? I know this is heavy lifting. You might end up getting a double hernia from this. But ask him, I'm sure that in that Indian parade up Fifth Avenue, they will have a shrine to uh, Mahatma Gandhi, right? As they should. Does the mayor consider that a slap in the face to Zionists, of which he's claiming? Remember, he says, I'm a Zionist, right? To Sid Rosenberg and all the Zionists. Because Gandhi opposed the state of Israel by saying it was wrong and inhumane. And I would have to assume if he was still alive today, he'd be at the DNC while Eric Adams is inside, you know, enjoying the DNC festivities. He's going to be, he would have been outside with all the protesters, all the pro-Palestinian protesters, 100,000 strong singing from the river to the sea. Could we, could we bet on that? Yeah, uh... I mean, I guess it, it seems bizarre to me because I know Gandhi was Hindu, right? Yes. And we, we were just talking about he it. He was killed onset. by a Hindu nationalist because, remember, there was the huge migration of Hindus and Muslims. That's how you ended up with Pakistan. Right, exactly. Right, right. Yeah. So I guess I'm just trying to make sense of heads and tails because there's so much beef between don't, Hinduism don't, and Islam. Please, don't don't think too much about this. Okay. And then you got one other uh, assignment. This is a much bigger assignment. This is like cracking a safe, a wall safe. Uh, it's been a month since the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. We st- still don't know which uh, Secret Service agents were assigned to the cow pasture in charge of that. And we still don't know if anybody was suspended or fired. Could you please get that? I've, I've been trying to get that information, and I've, I'm knocking myself out. But you have cred. You're like uh, you're a journalist. You know, you nobody would ever deal mess around with you. You're a, a wasp of good integrity. You know your journalistic skills. Notice we don't even know who was in charge that day at the cow pasture. Well, did you see the latest from yesterday, where the acting director Roe basically? had some call with the Secret Service members and said that there was no inter-agency communication that day, that basically the Secret Service wasn't communicating with the law enforcement, mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, there was no back and forth between the two oh, seems entities. To, uh, seems to roll into my theory. And also, how come a month after nobody's been fired, nobody's been transferred? I mean, very unusual, isn't it? Unless they're being rewarded for their, quote, in- what do we call that? Incompetence, um, the malfeasance, or maybe they're being encouraged to finish the job. Now get the hell out of here. It's the Rip and Read. Talking about featuring Curtis Lewa. Talk Radio 77 WABC. Curtis Lewa. Curtis Lewa. Rip and Read. Check this out. This is the Rip and Read featuring Curtis Lewa. About- now to the Bernard McGurk Studios of 77 WABC and Curtis Lewa. This is the Rip and Read. You know the day destroys the night, night divides the day. Try to run, try to hide, break on through to the other side, break on through to oh, the other yeah. side. You know, the favorite group uh, I've had, along with my wife Nancy, who will join us tomorrow in the Rip and Read, is Jim Morrison in the Doors. Without a doubt, the best. And you know, it's interesting, I'm going to combine two issues, because clearly Aaron Judge of the Yankees has broken on into the other side. Hammered in the air, deep to left field, history, number 300 for Aaron Judge, the fastest man ever in Major League Baseball to reach the 300 home run plateau. And then I realized, Justin Ellick, and more importantly, Lou Rufino, you would know this, that we haven't gone into the World Series and won a World Series in a long, long time, right? Justin, Matt Fanny, you're happy about that. We have won 27 World Championships. 
We are in the 27 Club. With the start of the Paris uh, Olympics, thank God there was no acts of terrorism. I remember, I remember when I was there, I visited the grave of Jim Morrison. Right there, it's right off the metro station uh, where, yes, the subways have rubber wheels. It's a hell of a better subway state situation than we have. But as you know, Lou Rufino, Jim Morrison, dead at 27. Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin. Brian Jones of the Stones, Kurt Cobain, Amy Winehouse, and we can go on and on and on. Justin Alec, I, I had that premonition last night. I was in a cold sweat, and I was saying to myself, could it be that the curse of the 27 Club is upon us? As Aaron, Aaron Judge broke on over to the other side with his record, superseding Ralph Kiner, who had to retire. People don't realize from baseball at 32, he had the Don Mattingly problem, a bad back. What was great, Kindness Corner, the best. The absolute, unexpected. You didn't know what to expect with the Kindness Corner. But once again, everything repeats itself. I heard Alan Dershowitz on this morning with Sid Rosenberg, and he gives every reason why he should be voting for Trump but is holding out for Harris. And we know, like so many folks, he's a Maytag. He's henpecked. His wife rules the roost there. But we'll see if he changes. But he did cite this story that was in the Jerusalem Post. That the United States, the Biden administration, gave uh, the names of the 10 Mossad agents operating in Iran to Tehran, to the Ayatollahs, as part of a good faith initiative in response to the Israeli strikes, which were carried on, they claim, without American coordination. Now... Uh, Justin, uh, you as someone who has traveled back and forth and you will continue to travel to the Holy Land, we were already expecting an Iranian response, right? I mean, they made a big thing out of it. We're getting them, man. These, the Israel has proven they can reach out and touch everyone, not just in Iran, but Lebanon, in Syria, in Yemen, wherever the Houthis, Hezbollah, Hamas, and obviously... The Ayatollahs are, they can reach out, touch them, and destroy them. So right away, they claim that it was a secret trip by the U.S. officials to Iran that took place on behalf of keeping the peace in the Persian Gulf and the Middle East. And right away, people in the media say, oh, this is disinformation. There's no way that could have happened. Absolutely not. It would be a level of betrayal of Israel and America's difficult to fathom. That's exactly what Dershowitz was saying. There's no stronger Zionist uh, than Alan Dershowitz. And some said it was so absurd and irresponsible to even publish this nonsense. You know that, Justin. And now, all of a sudden, the United States State Department denies sharing intel with Iran and the Ayatollahs over the assassination of the leaders of those that would like to destroy the state of Israel who were surrogates of the Ayatollahs in uh, Tehran in Iran. So the U.S. is denying it. So I guess what we're supposed to do, Justin Alec is trust our government, right? They wouldn't do anything like that, right? You see, Justin, uh, he's a little jaundiced. He's been over there. He's been back and forth. I'm very jaundiced. I don't care if it's a Democratic administration, as it is now, or a Republican administration. I don't trust any of them. And I believe that you verify first, and then you trust. Uh... Justin, can we turn back the clock 38 years? 38 years. Exactly 38 years ago, President Ronald Reagan announced to the nation on a national broadcast at night, covered by all the networks, that after weeks of denials, and boy, were they denying everything, that members of his White House staff had engaged in a web of covert Intrigue linking illicit U.S. support for the guerrilla war in Central America 
with an illegal and politically explosive arms for hostages bargain with Iran and the Ayatollahs. Now, what was that? This all had to do with the Contras that Reagan tried to get America on board to support. Poll after poll said, no, no, we, we don't want to go there. Uh, meantime, uh, the part-time mayor, the dope from Park Slope, Bill de Blasio, and his grifter wife, Charlene, they were supporting Daniel Ortega and his wife. They are dictators for life now in Nicaragua with the Sandinistas. A lot of people don't realize that. This was Ronald Reagan's passion. In order to supply the Contras, he had to violate the Bolin Act. There was an investigation by a joint committee of both the Senate and the House together about what was then called Iran-Contra. And the only way it ended up so that Ronald Reagan wasn't impeached because he was on his way to impeachment is the Admiral Poindexter fell on the sword. He said Ronald Reagan knew nothing about it. I planned it in the basement of the White House and uh, Oliver North executed it. Now, the reason that it was somewhat plausible back then in 1986 is that Ronald Reagan was beginning to suffer the first effects of what later was to consume and ravage him, dementia and Alzheimer's. It was obvious. He was stumbling and mumbling. He was not doing interviews. And they were protecting him. So Admiral Poindexter may well have been uh, the person orchestrating Iran-Contra, Ali North uh, facilitating it. They publicly took the rap so that Ronald Reagan would not be impeached. He was on his way to impeachment in 1986. People don't realize that. He was on his way to impeachment. And then this happened. But they swore up and down, Justin, check this out. They swore up and down that there had been no secret trips to negotiate with the Ayatollahs. No, because remember... I was in the middle of the Iran-Iraq war, eight years, a war of attrition, millions died. Saddam Hussein was our boy. Yeah, we were supporting Saddam Hussein against the Ayatollahs in Iran. Well, it turns out years later, we were to learn that our government lied to us again. Ronald Reagan had sent a secret mission to Tehran, led by Robert McFarlane. They carried a Bible with a handwritten verse from President Reagan for the Ayatollahs. They had falsified passports from Ireland and a key-shaped cake to symbolize the anticipated opening to Iran. What it enabled Iran to do was to buy tow missiles from Adnan Khashoggi, the arms dealer. Oh, yeah, and then they shoveled money to Ronald Reagan, through Admiral Poindexter and Ali North so that they can buy the uh, weapons to continue to aid and arm the Contras through the CIA air flights to Central America. In fact, it was the president of Iran, Rafsin Jani, who actually revealed it years later and said the Americans had been disguised and they had carried sets of Colt pistols as gifts for the Ayatollahs. And most importantly, it was true. McFarlane was the former national security advisor. He did carry the Reagan Bible. It was authenticated. They're not too sure if he brought a cake, but they would not discuss throwing Ireland under the bus who had given them the passports. They had sneaked into Iran. Now, you're telling me they did it 38 years ago and they didn't do it again in this the Biden administration. Notice the Ayatollahs had said they were going to attack. Right, Justin? We're waiting, aren't we? Why is there a delay? Well, just maybe our country, through our CIA, criminals in action, gave up the names of the 10 Mossad agents of Israel who are operating in Iran. I would totally believe that. In the game of Spy versus Spy that we all first read about in Mad Magazine, Alfred E. Newman, What Me Worry. Check this out. It's the Riff and Read featuring Curtis Lewa. Talk Radio 77 WABC. 
Talk Radio 77 WABC. Now to the Bernard McGurk Studios of 77 WABC and Curtis Lewa. Curtis doesn't know about you, but he rips and reads. This is the Rip and Read. It's the left versus the right in the right corner. Dominic Carter in the left corner. It's Anthony Weiner. Now to the Bernard McGurk Studios. It's a 77 WABC debate. The melee in the metropolis. Guarantee uh, tonight I'll be in Riverdale trying to stop a migrant uh, shelter from uh, opening up. And everybody there will ask me, oh... Uh, Anthony Weiner, Dominic Carter, left versus right. Do they like one another? Are they almost like choking each other out? And I got to say, ever since they swapped out Biden, who was like, uh, I guess, pretty much a TKO. <laughs> now that they have Harrison uh, with uh, Waltz, who you sh- served with. Right? I did. They're revived. They're resurrected. Uh, the polls are like neck and neck. So this is going to be like one hell of a slug out to November 5th every Saturday from well, 4 to Well, what the heck is Donald Trump doing? Donald Trump's tweeting out today about Joe Biden still. He is living, like, I got to tell you, the Republicans can get this thing organized in a, a minute. They're going to figure out a way to attack Harris. I figured out a way to tick walls. But not if Donald Trump keeps rambling on about Joe Biden and everything else. He's got to get some more focus here. I concur. It's sort of like a racehorse who's turning the the three-quarter mark at the track up at Saratoga. One thing I would say is that when Mike Dukakis emerged from the Democratic Convention, it was a little earlier than it is now, he was up by 11 points on Bush. You can figure out a way to attack Harris, you know, but you can't do it if your nominee is dominating the news by saying crazy things that are not on message. So, you know, Democrats, frankly, are going to win this thing if Donald Trump keeps acting the way he is. So do we find a tank that Harris can get into and put the tank hat on like Dukakis? Uh, huh? Do we have a Willie Horton it's moment gonna, for her? It's gonna, well, listen, I bet you there are a lot of Willie Horton things they can roll out. I, and I expect that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to try to make her a, a far out lefty. I just don't know if they have enough time to do it. Remember, you know, most people don't even they, they knew she was not a very good vice president, but no one really likes the vice presidents. Well, I listen, I when when me and Dominic debate nowadays, I come kind of dancing into the studio and he kind of comes dragging it because he 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 knows things have turned around. Yes, because uh the woke has rearrest uh, rearrest uh, re- resurrected. Resurrected. My God, it's like when you go into the ring for 15 rounds on Saturday. Again, you don't want to miss it four to five. The warm-up hour before Anthony alone. And if you've missed any of it, you go to the podcast. you got all of the left versus right. It really, it's like, it's like Frazier and Ali. They had all those yeah. battles. It went 15 rounds. There's a lot. Of, I mean, look, a lot of people watch those videos and they're like, oh, my, these guys hate each other. We've known each other for a long time. When he worked at, at, at New York One, he was asking me questions when I was running for mayor. That's how long the two of us go But back. also, you were on with the wise guys. That's right. When Dominic Carter was the face of New York One, the voice of New York One, as I was on once a week with Herson Bach. What happened with that gig? What happened with that gig? Well, <laughs> they changed ownership from uh, from Time Warner to somebody in North Carolina. They saw me with all the costumes, and they go, what the hell have we got By that By the way, I got to wait. If you fast forward to today, no yeah. one would even bat an eye about someone wearing no. kind of an, an, an off-color hat. Or you also you made fun of Christine Quinn with the wigs. Today, that would be considered so mild, it wouldn't even get a letter to the it, editor. It would, but everyone's become so partisan. See, that's, that's the problem. So, like, New York One used to be a place you see a lot of Republicans, a lot of Democrats. Right. You rarely see a Republican. Everybody just, they want to, their own party line. They keep drilling it into the ground. That's the beauty of left versus right. You get both sides, both guys knowledgeable, both guys have been around a long time. They're street fighters, but more importantly, they have information. And it's the only show where you really get that. Every other show... They're Homer shows, you know, it starts yeah. with sitting. I mean, we think, well, we think that people want to hear a little something different that hour. We try to give it to them. Sometimes we don't let each other finish sentences, but, you know, if you got to listen to only one group of sentences, listen to mine. Yeah, and there is no referee. You're there on your yeah, own, the right. both of you. It's a steel cage. It doesn't matter how ma- how often they bang the bell to end the round. You guys just keep talking, and two hours, three hours later, you never want to stop. 